I'm going to talk about structural age, structure, and textural. Those are the two basic ways to sort of think about an age makeup. We can do highlight and shadow, or we could put on a prosthetic, and uh, that these prosthetic transfers are very thin, but they give a little bit of shape and uh, different dimension to the structure of the face. Then there's texture, and we'll talk about texture, because texture can be two things. It can be paint, when we texture on lots of colors, or it can be what I've done around the eyes here, this wrinkles, and you can see we've actually uh, created some nice wrinkles with latex wrinkle stipple, uh, one of my favorite Ben Nye products. So I, that's the stipple I use all the time. So that's the two ways to create texture. Before we start, I want to, uh, I want to put on two more transfers and see how fast I can put them on. You can see there's a number of pieces over there. Bondo transfers are really good for thin pieces like foreheads. It could be upper lips. It could be uh, a little bit of a neck waddle that we have in there on one of them, which works really, really nicely. Because these are prosthetic transfers made of glue, made of prosade, it will stick to the skin really, really strongly, usually fairly easily. And then we use a wet sponge to try to release the, uh, release the transfer from, from the water paper. And then when you peel this off, you should have a really nice uh, piece lie down here like that. And any little rough edges or things like that can be blended off with 99% isopropyl alcohol. Just a little bit of a feathering of the edge if it needs it. Sometimes you get a bigger piece like that, you know, that might just lie down and blend into the skin so it lies down nice and flat. This is a really paper-thin forehead. Um, and if you saw the movie Benjamin Button with Brad Pitt, when he's in his middle age makeup, he has a really thin forehead, which makes it even kind of tougher and to sort of uh, pull off here. But we'll see if we can loosen this. When they do work well, they, do, they are fast. There's a lot of preparation involved in the transfers and this and that but generally they go on faster than most other kinds of prosthetics and they will also paint up a little quicker as we'll, uh, as we'll see, we'll do a little speed painting. Okay. And you can see uh, this will only need a little bit of reds in it. And uh, I, I usually bring out an assortment of reds from, uh, I've been using a lot of reds from this palette or the Ultimate Effects palette. And maybe we could show and them that palette I too. I I'll think just blend these the, off. Uh, contour blush palette, which is great for skin tones. Uh, we've discovered that these are also dissolvable uh, with alcohol, so you can make beautiful washes. Um, almost use them like uh, some of the other alcohol activated products. Uh, sure. They don't necessarily, they don't have the plasticizer in them, they are cream makeup but uh, you can then g brush over them with Final Seal, which kind of melds them all together, and it makes a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, painting medium. And the other palette he was talking about was the effects palette, which has your blood colors and your bruise colors in it. Uh, the lovely thing, they have this nice mixing palette within it. Again, as kind of artists, I like to have a Huge array of colors, you too, Stan? Yes, to I do. just work uh, from, because you never know what absolutely. adjustment you're going to get. And often the actor will show up, you know, and he's been out in the sun the next day or something, and you have to make a minor adjustment. You've got the palette, all these colors. You can uh, compensate for that. So it's a really great thing. One of the things I like palettes. about them, too, is you can thin them out with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to get a nice light wash like that. And... Um, by the way, I've got some really nice new Ben Nye brushes, but uh, if you ever have old brushes, your old beauty brushes, don't throw them away. You can sort of put them all together and they become your stipple brushes or your texture brushes for effects and age makeups and that sort of thing. It's a little, little thing I like here to do. So I'm just going to uh, put on some of those red colors first. Normally, what we're going to end up doing is adding lots of uh, reds and lots of browns. I, I, I like to paint with lots of texture, so it's sort of pointillism, especially in a character uh, makeup effect like this. Yeah, we don't want it to look too much like acne, 
And you might have different smaller size brushes or smaller size sponges just to do that. But red becomes sort of the key because the prosthetic does not have blood in it. There's blood in your skin showing that nice red in his skin, but when you put a prosthetic on, you need to replace all that red. We want to leave a few light areas too. We don't want it all to uh, be covered up entirely. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other color we're going to use are a lot of browns, freckle browns, sunspot kind of colors, that sort of thing. That will help us out a lot. So now I'm putting on just a nice little freckly kind of colors, these sort of yellow browns to break up the skin. And again, it's, it's, it's like pointillism. Nice to have lots of texture. We're doing it a little strong because this is something you could use, uh, certainly uh, in the theater. These transfers, these techniques uh, works fine for television, film, and the theater. A lot of people think these prosthetics might just be for uh, film or TV, and they're very good for HD because they have nice edges and you can get the color right. But truthfully, uh, if you had an actor who perspired a lot, mm -hmm. uh, this might be really, really a good solution for doing a quick sort of um, age makeup to change the structure of his face. And again, it's sort of finding the reds that are in the actor's skin. If it's, people say, well, what color of red? There's so many really great cream red colors in the Ultimate Effects palette, but you can need to look at the actor's skin and then try to find the red when you wash it out. That will match that really well, and then away you go. Now, we've sort of done doing sort of a coloration here first before doing any real highlights and shadows. Uh, part of that is because with a prosthetic, you may not need to do a lot of highlights and shadows, but you still have to do some, some definition here, for sure. And if you want to find, um, you know, the, 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 the temple uh, highlight, you know, for, that's going to work with the actor's skin and whatnot, you can certainly find that out. Sometimes the cheekbone, and really instead of a line, perhaps you're again putting it on with a bit of pointillism. So you can kind of break that up a bit so it's not too, too smooth and even. And we can make it really nice and strong if we want. Or we can keep it subtle. We can go either way with that. What I like to point out on the face, put your chin down a bit. Chin down just There's a big shadow here naturally. Everybody has that shadow. That shadow is the same angle as that shadow. Same angle. There, there, and the corner of the mouth. So we have three shadows that we want to define. And then we got the highlight in here and a little highlight in there as well. So those are things we want to bring out. I'm going to do the, the highlights first here just to uh, just put them back in there a little bit, just to accentuate that. And uh, then it's going to come in with a bit of shading here, and I'm just going to uh, grab a little a couple of brushes. Um, many, many good shading colors, warm shading colors, browns, purples. And there are good colors that m you might find the perfect color for your actor. It's uh, also a lot of fun, though. You usually have to customize to their skin Wide tone. Wide range of colors. <laughs> <laughs> lots of them. So you can find. It's fun to try. Yeah. I love lots of colors. And then finding your own colors to make a perfect custom match for the actor's uh, coloring. And Sometimes a little more of a red-brown just under the eye is going to weaken, weaken the eye a little bit. That's a nice thing in an age makeup to do that. Weaken the eye just a little bit with that. Close your eyes. Same thing with just a little bit of that redness there stippled on the lid. And open your eyes again and look straight out this way. And that's going to definitely weaken the eye. We did a little bit on this one, but the redness will, will always help. Once you've done a neutral shadow, you can actually put a little bit of the red color over that too. And that'll make a bit of your shadow come to life. So it's not so flat, it's not so dead of a shadow. But that's those shadows I was talking about. We want a real strong shadow here in that area because that's one of the strongest ones in the face. Beauty makeup artists, we're always trying to cover <laughs> that one, right? You're always trying to conceal that shadow. But in age makeup, you look at the person's face, find where the shadows are, and make them darker. So it's a little bit different of an approach, for sure. Then there's the corner of the mouth, right? We want to pull that down. We're trying to pull everything down with the age makeup. Sag the face downwards a little bit. We can take a tiny brush and you can accentuate any of those little wrinkles and folds that are in the prosthetic. And you'll find that these browns with a bit of purple, that's good for some people. Some people have more blue under their eyes, some people more red, some people more brown, but 
you sort of find what that is. I'm just going to accentuate the forehead lines now a little bit. I'm just going in the lines. Those are sculpted in there. Those lines are sculpted in the prosthetic. He had no lines on his forehead. He's pretty smooth forehead, uh, Nesho does. And uh, that's a good thing for us uh, because we can sort of see how much more we can get now with that prosthetic. It's so thin, but it gives us that texture. And if you raise your Boy, eyebrows is it up, beautiful, though. <laughs> it will move with his face. So hold him way up. Look at that. And turn three quarter to me. Yeah, turn to the turn right. as much to the side as you, you can. You literally have three dimensional folds. But even though they're three dimensional, you should still do some highlight and shadow with some paint work for sure for those. I'm just going to get a few more of these fine uh, reds here for a, just a little bit of a sharper texture on his nose. And other areas that may have that kind of a texture might, might be on the chin, of course, to create some of that purple and red colors. The more colors that you can layer on to a makeup like this, but even in a beauty makeup, the more colors you can layer on, the better of an effect you're going to have. It's going to be uh, a little more realistic. Many layers. Nothing is ever one color. One is none. That's the first thing, right? One mm. is none. And nothing is ever one color uh, in the world of makeup. So we try to layer many different colors and textures. Uh, when I'm teaching my students, I'll say, you know, think about a, there might be a foundation color. We didn't have a foundation, we used a skin. Then there's highlights, then there's shadows to create structure. Then there's textural colors to create textural aging. So you have many, many layers of things to, uh, to produce there. And, and it's just a good idea to think about your makeups in those terms. Uh, let's talk about eyebrows for a second. Because eyebrows are one of those things that people often might put, you could use a snow white, like the hair coloring we have in here. The Ben Nye Ivory works really nice on lighter hair. The snow white gives you a stronger effect, silver hair gray. Uh, Nesso's got very short eyebrows. And they're not too dark, but sometimes if you want a more subtle effect, uh, you can take a color that's not too light, that's almost more of a foundation kind of color. I'm gonna use a little fan brush here. And instead of making them white or silver, we can just fade them and fade the color. And we can just go against the grain like that. And you can see there's plenty of color in that. It actually looks like a pretty strong color, but it's not white. It's not silver. It's sort of a yellow foundation kind of color here. This palette being, this is the 18 color cream contour palette. And actually, uh, I was able to use most of the colors of this makeup from here for an age makeup, but there's, there's colors in here for beauty. Or for, this is like, you can do anything with this, and that's one of the things that makes it very versatile. With a lash, you might almost want to use a foundation kind of color, something that would match his skin, a little bit darker. And you can do a fan brush, and you can look straight ahead. I'll just demonstrate it, but I won't do it. Open your eyes and look right at the back. But you see, if I'm going in like that, I can go right in and just, just lift up the lashes a little bit, or even on top, and I can just fade them not too white, that's the main thing. And then they'll soften and weaken and age the eye just by taking away that dark lash. So here I've used a darker color. What color is this? It's almond. Almond's a good color, it has lots of yellow in it. And you can see how that's softer than that now. It's, 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 it's a nice difference. You can put more on if you want. Uh, and for theater, you could make it really, really strong, obviously. So that really helps weaken and age and soften the eye for sure, uh, like we did there. We could probably, some of this texture might look a little harsh still, but you can sort of go over and fix that up. One last color thing I'm gonna probably do from the effects palette yes, sir. is just do a little bit of a beard tone. Oh, this so is the great thing about it. I can take a little black, a little vein tone, and I can mix up a nice little, uh, we, we make a nice uh, beard stipple. In fact, mm. it's kind of the industry standard for beard stipple colors um, that creates a nice black-brown effect. You might want one that's more charcoal or more green. Again, you can mix for that depending on your actor. Some people who have olive skin tones have a little bit of a greenish in their natural beard stipple tone. We can actually just mix something right out of the palette to customize again, to make it work for him. And it makes the prosthetic come to life because now you've got some whiskers on the prosthetic. And that actually was a really nice color. That vein tone uh, really just took down with the black 
if you were suddenly stuck, and that's why I like palettes. You're never stuck. You need something, you left that color at home, you've got your palette, it's, you and I've had it. that happen. And of course, I'm just gonna take a little bit more here just so he's not totally, it's more in the goatee area that I'm doing, but just in the interest of time. Oop, how are we gonna finish this? I have an idea. I think we should finish this character with a bit of a, a mustache. One of the things is we have this side of the face piece, we've got this piece over here, and suddenly the in-between can look very young. You know, and how do we age all that? You know, the stipple is one way of doing it. We had red stipples and freckles, beard tone stipples, layering those things will help give that texture and blend those back into the piece so it all looks like the same skin. Uh, but one of the things that's gonna age somebody really, really well uh, on the upper lip is if you were able to give a mustache, that's always gonna make a man look a little bit older for sure. I don't wanna go on the white line of the lip. I wanna go above that. But right up high is a good idea under the nose. But when you have somebody wearing a mustache, they're breathing out of their nose and warm air and heat and moisture are there. So mustaches are, are really can be tricky to sort of maintain and keep on the, the whole day. So we want to use maybe two or three layers of, of, of glue if you wanted to keep them on. Mm -hmm. So that first layer is nice and sticky. Nice and tacky. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a second layer on. This is a matte spirit gum. But lots under the nose where that heat and moisture is. So that will stay where we want it to be. Tack that up, tacking it will remove the shine too. But if you over tack it, it's suddenly not as sticky anymore. Yeah. This is getting nice and sticky. We've made a fair bit of a change with Nesho, just putting his hair back and having some gray. That forehead creates a lot of change, obviously. The structure in the jowls, you can turn that way for us and gives us a nice little uh, a whole structure happening in there and turn back this way. Here we have the stipple on that eye and that really helps get those, those three dimensional wrinkles in there which are really, really nice. So let's just uh, pop this mustache on. And the amazing thing is that this will really suddenly age an actor, as I said, and you see what I'm saying. Suddenly he's, you know, another few years older just because of this mustache and how we have that. And there we have a really quick aging techniques, structure and uh, texture and a mustache and a bit of hair work. You know, if you're using latex, even the wrinkle stipple that I did, and we talked about heat and moisture and that can be a problem. Uh, you can actually get a little bit of prosade, prosthetic adhesive, few drops to make that stronger if you, if you were out somewhere in the desert shooting or it's gonna be really hot and humid. Uh, that helps sort of uh, strengthen that uh, formula and works very, very nicely. This could be all pretty much strong enough for theater. We, did, uh, we could even that out. We could take these things stronger. We could add more reds. We could add more highlights, you know? We could certainly do all those things, but this is probably gonna be about where we'd wanna be. Uh, sometimes you go in and just really get a nice the deeping of the crease with these nice little pencils. This particular color, if I can read this, LP143, the name would be Chocolate Chocoholic. It's a nice red-brown, and red-browns are really good for aging. They're not too red, they're not too brown. So sometimes that works out really nice if you're gonna increase your shadows. If I've done everything, if it's soft, or I wanna touch up really fast, I can kinda of go in and really just get a, a, a quick little increase. Let's say I was going to make this more of a stage makeup. I could come in and uh, look up a bit. We could actually literally just get a little more shading in with that and quickly intensify that to that kind of a thing. Filling in these little lines in here too, very handy, right in the grooves that are there and suddenly it's becoming much more projected, more theatrical and that's a real help. So. You know, we use a lot of things, brushes, sponges, pencils. Uh, don't, don't just use uh, one or two things. You really should use many different products and tools to see what, how that will achieve the effect that you want it to achieve. A little shadow come off of there. I mean, you can literally go in here and you could actually do some nice little crow's feet too and get that kind of an effect. Suddenly it becomes more theatrical. Same thing with the forehead lines. So we sort of went from a some film stuff, some television scale. You know, film and television and stage, all the same techniques. 
And I used to be mystified when I started out my career. I was like, well, what's the difference between stage makeup, film makeup, all those things, and really the techniques? We should all know all these techniques. It's just a matter of how big you do it and how subtle you do it. But sometimes I use theatrical stage techniques all the time on film and big screen, but just on a small scale. Uh, don't be afraid to try those things. You know, they'll, they'll give you a good result. So if you've got dust blowing up, that can be an issue. And one of the things you can do is, um, I'm looking for my powder puff here. There's a whole lot of powder on this. Makeup, look at that. I'm, I'm gonna vanish in a puff of smoke. You can, of course, do a light little powder to take away the tacking. But uh, once you've powdered it, you might wanna use Final Seal. And just for a little bit of a protectant, and then you can even lightly dust with a brush, powder over the Final, final Seal. Uh, you don't want those to be as sticky as that is. I mean, that's better now, it's not as sticky. But over here, really sticky. So you'd want to basically work in that powder. Just to take the tack away, you don't want to change your coloring too much, because that can happen too. Then it's, not, then it's smooth, it's not sticky, so the dust will brush off. But quite often, and close your eyes, we'll literally just do just a few puffs of that final seal to help protect the makeup. Seals in the colors. Those cream colors, the effects colors, mixed with alcohol, locks them in. They're not gonna move even if you perspire, which is nice. But this is added insurance at the end just to make sure everything's nice and fixed.